Like many young boys, I read a lot of science fiction, and I was fascinated by the idea of life on other worlds. So imagine how exciting it was when during my childhood, two massive scientific discoveries for the first time made that science fiction seem a possible scientific reality. In the 70s, NASA landed its Viking probe on the surface of Mars and shortly after announced they'd found possible traces of life in the Martian soil. And then, hot on the heels of this, came the discovery here on Earth of life in deep sea hydrothermal vents. Underwater volcanoes thought to be way too hostile to support life. For me, this opened up the possibility that life was possible pretty much anywhere in the universe. If it can occur at a hydrothermal vent, then why not on the surface of another planet? It's no surprise then that I became a scientist, specializing in finding life in extreme environments. And I've found life everywhere, from boiling hot springs to icy polar deserts. This attracted the attention of the US space agency, NASA. And for several years, I've been working with NASA scientists in the relatively new discipline of astrobiology. Astrobiologists seek to answer what is probably the biggest question we can possibly ask of ourselves as humans. Are we alone? Or is life in fact multi-planetary? A major concept in astrobiology is the habitable zone. This theory explains how any planet can support the conditions for life if it fulfills two important criteria. So firstly, it must have the right mass to retain an atmosphere that is not too heavy that it includes toxic gases, like Saturn, for example, and not too thin that it cannot keep gases important for life, like our moon. Secondly, it must have an orbit at just the right distance from its star to allow liquid water to exist. Too close and water will evaporate due to the heat of the sun. Too far away and the planet's surface will be too cold, and so all the water will be frozen as ice. This need to be not too hot, not too cold, but just right, means that this is often referred to as the Goldilocks zone for life. Now, in our solar system, Earth is the only planet in the Goldilocks zone. But because this zone varies over time as a star evolves, we know that in the not too distant past, Mars may also have been habitable. Now we know that despite claims by 19th century astronomers that they could see traces of advanced civilizations on Mars, today we know that this is not the case and any Martians are most likely to be like the creatures we find in extreme environments here on Earth. Because the surface of Mars is a pretty hostile place. It's icy cold, there's not much water, and has high levels of ionizing radiation. So, do we have any examples of life in extreme places on Earth that could survive the conditions on Mars? Well, the answer to that is yes. Antarctica has a vast ice-free desert that is very similar to Mars' surface. And despite the cold, lack of water, and high levels of UV radiation, the spaces beneath and within rocks are teeming with life. This is mostly microbial life, tiny single-celled organisms so small that you could fit 10 million or more on a pinhead. They have really simple cell design and a versatile physiology that allows them to thrive where other life can't. They are mostly bacteria called cyanobacteria. And like plants, they get their energy from the sun. But because of the harsh physical environment, they need to burrow beneath the surface where they form thick layers of life within rocks. The rock above gives some protection from the harsh environment, but even that is not enough. And so they also create their own natural sunscreen compounds to protect them from the UV radiation. You can see here the pink layer in this Antarctic rock is due to sunscreen compounds that protect the green cyanobacteria below. This strategy is called the microbial cabana and is a common feature to all extreme communities in deserts. And so this is where we should be looking for life on Mars. Space missions of the last 15 years or so have revealed that water was once widespread on Mars. And although pretty scarce today, it is still liquid in some places. And these also support rocks such as sandstone, where we know cyanobacteria form their microbial cabana. The next generation of Mars exploration by the US Space Agency, NASA, and the European Space Agency includes landers that will specifically look for traces of life, both past and present, by drilling into Martian rocks to look for that sign of the microbial cabana. These will be on the surface of Mars within five years, and NASA has boldly predicted 
that within 10 years, they will deliver the first indisputable evidence for signs of life on another planet. This will be very exciting because finding a second genesis for life, even if it is only little green microbes rather than little green people, will mean that the chances of finding life elsewhere in the universe suddenly get a whole lot better. There are also plans to look further afield. For example, Europa, one of Jupiter's ice moons, has a big secret. Beneath the icy surface lies a vast liquid water ocean. This is possible because although it's outside the habitable zone for our star, the Sun, the massive gravitational effects of Jupiter have created the possibility for undersea volcanism. And this could mean hydrothermal vents, which we know support life here on Earth. So the concept of the habitable zone probably needs revising a little bit. And possibly the best way to do that is to view the conditions for life as like baking a cake. You need all the right ingredients. And in the case of life, this means carbon, hydrogen, nitrogen, and other compounds. A solvent, such as water, to mix them in. Energy to bring them together, just as you add energy in the form of heat to bake a cake. And finally, you need stability over time, as we all know what happens to a cake if you open the oven door too early. If a planet fulfills these four criteria, then it could potentially support life wherever it occurs. There have also been incredible advances in planetary science from space telescopes such as Kepler. These have allowed astronomers to identify literally thousands of Earth-like planets orbiting distant stars. And this, of course, opens up the possibility of finding an advanced civilization out there among the stars. So, regardless of whether we discover simple microbial aliens or intelligent life in space, one thing is clear. This is a discovery that goes way beyond just science. It's going to change all of our lives forever. <laughs>